All right. Let's build a pedal board. And uh, in this one, I'm going to make a small one. And I'm going to make it on uh, coated plywood. And the first thing, uh, let's go through some uh, stuff I'm going to be using and the tools. So soldier and soldiering iron. Uh, good tools to have. Uh, also, when if you repair your guitars or stuff like that. And uh, I'll be making my own cables on this board, so that's why I have those. And of course, uh, wire strippers, one pliers, and knife uh, are used to make those cables. And this is like a 30 watt one, I think, so it has enough heat for this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, cheap stuff doesn't cost too much. You're going to save a whole lot of money if you uh, learn how to do your own cables. And you can also do the power cables. And I'll be... I'll make them because I want them to be made to length. So I don't have any like extra cabling going on. So yeah, those are the basic tools I'll need for that stuff. And what do we have then? Oh, probably, yeah, this kind of stuff. So, uh, to get the cabling, like, really nice and tight and tidy, I'll be using those. You, you know, they I can just stick them onto the board, and then I'll use zip ties that go in there. And then I just tie all the cabling that run, uh, I just put them on zip ties, which I have also. These are small ones. I'll have to use bigger ones, but uh, those don't cost much, and it makes everything like much prettier, very pretty. No, but it it's uh, and of course then I'll be using uh, plugs, not those one, not those ones. I'll be using uh, these flat uh, nutric ones I've been using those now so these kind of that kind of stuff uh, because of the small space they take and I'll put the link in the descriptions those are really really good uh, and then I have a cable and this one's uh, I think a summer cable uh, let me check. So that's what's the sound I'm checking. So it is, yeah, summer cable onyx. So I'll be using that cable for the patch cables, and then uh, Velcro. So I'll be using that to tape the pedals onto the board, and I might also use this. Uh, dual lock so that's even more like that really sticks you you need to like get a tool to get the pedal off when you use that stuff but for some stuff that might be needed so i have that also and that's like the basic stuff i need uh to make a like a pretty nice basic pedal board and uh then uh, we'll probably clear this off and I'll get to the pedal selection and I'll lay it out here and see that everything fits and uh, then I'll take the measurements. I'll be uh, going to my local, local shop where I can get the coated plywood and I just go there and you know, with the measurements, and I'll be like, hey, can you make this for me? Uh, this take, and they'll do it. it. It will be really cheap. But yeah, oh, the pedals. So, first of all, need to have a tuner. And uh, that's a uh, cork, pitch black. And that's, like, always going to be on. And I'll show you why. Uh, then I picked up uh, this small like flanger flanger i don't know how to pronounce that but yeah 
Electric Lady. Uh, sounds really nice. Uh, then I have a self-made one, basic boost pedal, and uh, that's gonna be on there too. And then uh, this is gonna be the AB box. So uh, I'll be sending my signal into that box and out of that box into the tuner and then to the rest of the pedals. So then when I press that red button, uh, I can uh, route my signal to the tuner. So it also works as a mute pedal in that way. And I can tune myself, uh, tune my guitar quietly. No one will hear. And then uh, Rat, self-made one, uh, basic one, not modded in any way, just uh, your regular Rat, but in a smaller enclosure. Uh, then I had this uh, tremolo uh, lying around, so I might use that one. And some of these pedals mm, I might swap, let's see. And then I'll use a compressor. I've been really liking that one. I think it's a uh, Amex or Dynacomp or something. So, uh, and that's gonna be the pedals I'll be using. So seven of them. That's not much. And like I said, it's gonna be a pretty pretty basic board. Uh, and I don't have any delay or reverb. But if I swap one in there. Uh, I'm, I'll be running this whole thing all to the front of the amp. Oh, and then we get to the uh, power plant. So power supply for the pedals. This is a good one. Uh, all of the outputs are isolated. Uh, that is what I recommend uh, because that's something that will keep noise out of your chain. So... Yeah, a good power supply is always definitely worth the money. And these have been really good. I used to have uh, these power plant junior Harley Bentons. And uh, those those are still going. I sold both of them, uh, one of them to my brother. And he still uses it. And it's like I can't seven years or over old. So... Yeah, I'm built like a tank, so I've been happy with those. But yeah, so I'll start uh, laying this thing down. We have enough power for all of these. And uh, I'm thinking about the order. I'll have to, I'll have to uh, get me some cables and stuff to... Uh, get the measurements right. I want to see that everything fits. I don't want to run to any surprises when I have the plywood board, actually. Uh, I could use other stuff as well, uh, but I'm going to use plywood. And the power plant is going to take up some space. Uh, some or I could do one that it would be under the board, but I'm just gonna do this one like this. So yeah, now when I get to the uh, part where I lay everything up, I'm gonna put in these jacks so I can see uh, how much space they take because yeah, that's you need to know that when you do your measurements. And then of course I'm gonna put uh, the power cables on the power plant to see that everything fits in there as well and that's my ugly head out of the way dude out of the way out of the way come on there we go now stay stay out all right uh, there he is again but yeah so uh, then, of course, you have to think about a bit about the signal chain. So you won't be like doing any 
long, unnecessarily long uh, patch cables. Uh, you want to keep them short. And the cable I've been using is uh, it's this uh, the Onyx one. Uh, I'll be putting the link in the description also because uh, that's something I like to use. It ha it's not as thick as your basic you know guitar cable, so you can save some space. And of course, in the end, if you're gonna make a big board, you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna yeah it, it won't weigh as much so you, you're cutting off some weight also and that's not a bad thing you know never i think so yeah it is let's see what i end up with i can't remember i i recorded this i talked and i'm doing an overdub so i just find it much easier that way and the audio quality should be better I hope all right so uh, am I going to end up with that dude again what the fuck am I gonna end up like that I think the tremolo is gonna be last yeah so uh The AP box, of course, with the red, big, big red button is gonna be first. I should write with just a sharpie, like, don't press this <laughs> on there. All right. Yeah, so. Uh, and I'll be probably flipping. I'll, prop, I'll flip the compressor like sideways because like we see here it would take like that and of course you need to be able to press everything with your foot and you want to make it easy so you don't stomp on anything else when you do that so uh, that's one thing you have to keep in mind but like that it, what we see now not good so uh, i'll do this and then we can make it more compact, like that. And it looks so much better right away. And everything makes more sense. And that cable, of course, there is just for, uh, you know, just for the measurements. And what I see now, I'll probably, uh, let's see how it goes. But from the A, B, of course, the other one, other output is going to go into the tuner, but then I'll uh, probably go either to the boost or then to the compressor first, and out of that into the boost, then to the rat, uh, then to the flange, and lastly the tremolo, which I might you know change for a, a delay or some sort of reverb uh, now I'm just putting uh, the cables in place to see I don't want to I don't want anything to like be outside of the board except the jacks going in and out I mean blocks uh, but yeah so and everything looks like it should fit So this this setup looks like it's ready for uh, uh, ready for me to take measurements. But one thing I remembered is uh, those uh, things for the zip ties. So I'll grab one of those probably right now, and uh, I need to see that they fit also so yeah those ones so let's see so i want them those to be like that that's nice so i can fit them uh in between the pedals and you know 
and make the cabling really clean. Uh, those are cheap. Uh, of course, it's not necessary, but I just like to do it. And if I would build a board for someone, yeah, it it definitely would be even even prettier than the ones I do my for myself. So, but there we can see the difference between uh, the cables, power cables that come with the power plant and the ones I make myself. So again, uh, yeah, I, I can save some room and I can make it much, much prettier, you know. And of course, make them to size, you know, or the, to a certain length when I do them myself. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing. And actually, now that I'm watching this, I do see I am almost making a mistake, I think, because those angled cables are not what I'm going to be plugging into the power plant. So, yeah, I'll have to think about that and actually look this up. I should mention that. So right there, we see on the right corner now. Uh, so I might need to actually add one, I think one centimeter or something into the And there we have, I'm taking the, I have my ruler, and that's what I'm going to go with. So the other one's going to be like 40 centimeters, and the other one's going to be, what was it, can't remember, 23, but I'll probably make it like 25, just to have, you know, a little room for that thing I just mentioned but yeah so that should be it and uh, yeah the single chain from there to the compressor then to the boost then to the rat and then yeah, the flange and lastly the tremolo and then from there out to the amp so and there's not going to be, this is going to be a really simple one. So I'm not sending anything to the amps effects loop. Uh, I am probably going to make uh, another one of these where I build a huge board with a loop switcher that I have. Uh, but that's going to be something else. This is going to be really simple and basic. And the other one's going to be uh, uh, like a hybrid setup where I'm taking my signal to an actual amp and then uh, I'm going to send it to an amplitude also and probably also uh, a pedal, uh, like an amp in a box pedal type of thing. So, yeah. And there I show again like Velcro, uh, dual lock. I need to have those. I have to actually go and buy some. I'm running out. Noticed I was running out when I was making this. So, and we have a local shop nearby that sells that by meter. So, it's a it's a quite expensive stuff, but it's still much cheaper to go and buy it there than it would be from like ordering from a music shop. So. And yeah, that's uh, that's good cable, the Onyx. So I'll be using that uh, because, as we can see, it's it's like I have to yeah pull it apart and then make uh, just one lead out of it. You know, I need my knife. 
there we go. So that's how it works. I have a lot of that. Uh, I am prepared. So and now we can see that I'll show the difference between a cable, guitar cable, and that one. So yeah, it's not as thick. Uh, that guitar cable is not as thick as some also. So, and so that's a good one if you want to make your own own patch cables i'll have that in the description and uh yeah and the new new jacks also uh, but that's it i think this is what you want to do when you plan one and you want to get like a board cut or if you're uh, going to buy something like uh, one of those uh, aluminum ones. So just make sure everything fits and uh, then you're ready to get yourself a board and eventually put it together, you know. And God damn, that, that end screen isn't big enough. I can see some movement on it top and bottom there. Bad editor. Bad, bad one. 